Welcome to the podcast. We're street smart, business smart, all kinds of smart people share their insights into the world of marketing, career journeys, and personal growth. So sit back and prepare to get enlightened with your host, Adam Posner. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to the podcast where I bring you the best and brightest from the world of business, marketing, and personal growth to help you harness your inner tenacity and drive your career forward. Tribe, thank you for joining us. This is episode 50, and I wanted to do something special today as a thank you, but also to really showcase my amazing guest today, Claude Silver. For those of you who may not know her, Claude is the Chief Heart Officer at VaynerMedia. Yep. working uh, right hand to the great Gary Vaynerchuk. And a lot of you know my story already, but just to kind of recap it, uh, back in 2014, 2015, I was at Vayner for a few short months, about seven months. And my time here was short, and we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and I had some challenges, right? I didn't bring my A game. I didn't perform and deliver the best of my ability. And it was a really tough time for me. But during that time, I had someone really special on my side, and that was Claude Silver. And I want to thank you so much for that. But really what I want to do today is use this canvas, the podcast, to really help anybody else out there who may be struggling in their job, who may be having some difficulties, or maybe you just started a new job and it's not feeling right, like you didn't get off on the right foot. So we're going to dig into that and a whole lot more. Claude Silver, thank you and welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Adam. It's so good to see you. And uh, number 50, I'm honored. Number 50. And Claude mentioned off air that five is... (laughs) My favorite number. ...is one of her favorite numbers. so let's take it back to 2015. I want to get this part out of the way. I don't know if you can remember the old office. I do. do you remember there was not anywhere, there was nowhere to sit? I mean, I think maybe we spoke in the stairwell. I'm going to tell you exactly where we spoke. Okay. We spoke by the dumpster by the freight elevator. Great. And, classy. <laughs> classy. Classy, classy, classy HR here. And it was at the time where, I mean, listen, I would be lying if I said I didn't know my job was in jeopardy. There were checkpoints, there were points coming mm-hmm. in. And I did have opportunities to fix it. Mm-hmm. I did. And for whatever reasons, personal things going on in my mm-hmm. life, where I was at that point, I didn't course correct. I didn't. And everything happens for a reason. But most importantly, you were there leading with your heart to help me through that situation. So we're not going to get into specific details. The past is a past. Mm-hmm. We're long past that and everything. But generally speaking, when, you're, when an employee you know, is having difficulties and struggling, what is your first approach? Well, my first approach is to listen and to find out, like, what is their, what are their pain points? Um, uh, what do they think that they're responsible for? Obviously, what are we responsible for? Most often, an employee is either going to have a lot of self-awareness or not a lot of self-awareness. So you're pretty much going to have a big pool to play in. And oftentimes, it's going to be my manager didn't do this or I was promised this or the client stinks or this, that, and the other. And so I'm just listening to that. And then, you know, depending on what we want to do here with said employee, hopefully most of the time I'm going to guide this person to see things potentially a different way. Um, All employees, every single person, I should say, I don't use the word employee often, everyone wants to grow. And so the question is, help me grow, or I'm not growing, or I'm told I'm not growing, or the story in my head is that, my limiting belief is that I'm so forth and so on. I'm never going to get a good chance. Like, so I have to listen for all of that, find what the patterns are, decipher, decipher them, and then, you know, let's 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 do this. Like, absolutely. On, let's, let's let's give you a good solid chance at being a winner here. It's very interesting. Um, talking about self awareness, it's it's something that gets thrown around a lot these days. Some people have it, or they don't, or they have it in them, and they haven't really been given the keys to unlock that. And for me, I think that was a big step in my story is having the self-awareness to understand that maybe this is not what I'm destined to be doing, or maybe that Vayner wasn't the right place for me at that Mm -hmm. time. And it's hard to get people to shift their mindset from making excuses to taking accountability and really understanding. Some basic practices when you work with, with 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 an employee who's struggling to help them tap into and find their self-awareness. Yep, so talking to them about their values. What are their values? And that could be success, recognition, time, um, relationships, uh, thinking strategically. 
So I'm list, I, I, I basically have a list of 200 values if they can't come up with any, because sometimes it's hard on the spot. So I want to know that's, that's motivator, right? Absolutely. I ask them immediately, like, what do they think their strengths are? What, what would your team say about you? Mm -hmm. What are your strengths? And then I ask them like what they think their strengths are. So these are all questions, they're open-ended questions to find out like where they rate themselves. And I can pretty easily figure out where they are on the spectrum of like super self-aware and really wanting to improve and evolve themselves right. or in the dark ages and that door hasn't been open yet. And I'm happy to help them open that door. Like that, that to me, I, I take so much, um, I'm, I'm humbled if someone wants to work with me on that. So let's uh, let's take an example here of somebody who gets hired by VaynerMedia. They think it's the uh, the whole the holy grail. They come in, and you know what? The grass was not greener on the other side for whatever reason. I mean, Vayner is a fantastic place, but some people they may come in and they may not be ready. They may not be set up for success. And someone comes in and their heart is pounding, and they think that they made a mistake. Mm -hmm. They think it's not right for them. You know, what type? What, how does that conversation go? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask is like. A, how do you know it's not right for you? And it could be, in today's day and age, it could be around diversity and inclusivity. It could be that they are coming from a traditional agency and we're not. It's a little bit different here. Yeah, so they got to kind of get the rust off. They're coming from a place where you have to earn trust. We give trust. These are things that are going to jar someone at first or also be like, whoa, is this as good as it is? You know, that kind of stuff. So I, I want to make sure that a per, is, is a person feeling anxious because of anything that we've done or in, in good, bad, indifferent? Um, or is a person feeling anxious because like they did make the wrong decision uh, or we made the wrong decision and they're feeling that? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a tough one too. Yeah. So what happens, what happens, listen, this is a business and business decisions need to get made and unfortunately people have to get let go. Yeah. If you don't mind peeling back the curtain a little bit without getting into any too detail yeah. and not too much into the Vayner process here, but let's talk about how hard of a decision it is. Sometimes, I mean, listen, people, people do things that you got to go, but like in some cases, it's a really tough decision. What does that process look like? Yeah. I want to just back up, Adam, really sure, absolutely. quickly. And one thing I didn't say on that last question is the other thing I do is I ask them how many people they've met here. Like, are they only like kind of like, have they felt quarantined to mm. the 10 people on their team? Have they gotten to meet people in other uh, departments? Have they gotten to meet Gary? Have they gotten to meet other C-suite? Have they branched out? Because the people is what makes this place amazing. Absolutely. And if they've only met the 10 wonderful people on their team, they're siloed and they have not seen anything other than the color red. It's a very interesting point too, because some people are introverted and they may feel shy to actually yeah. put themselves out there. How do you create an, an environment for a new employee to come in and really welcome, this is important, I'm glad we're going back to this. How do you create that, that warm environment to really set them up for not just role specific success, but cultural success? Yeah, so we, we have a four day orientation that every single person goes in, whether or not you're C-suite or you're a junior copywriter, you are sitting together in, in, for four days. And in those four days, you are creating community and connection with your oh, other it. peers. You are meeting different subject matter experts that are coming in in four days to teach you the secret sauce of VaynerMedia. You are going for buddy lunches with strangers. You are certainly doing a lot of um, uh, you know, icebreakers. We try to make those fun. So right there, we're trying to even the playing floor immediately. I love it. And connect because connection is the birthplace of like belonging and mattering. You hit that, belonging and mattering. I literally have it right here yeah. in front of me. Uh, creating that, because you could, you could create the, the canvas for that, the crucible, but it's really up to the employee to take the first step. Well, it's funny that you say that. Um, I see it a little bit differently because I look at VaynerMedia as a living, breathing organism. So it's up to us and that employee to meet each other across a bridge. I look at things very, very much fair. in a relationship. <clears throat> and not everyone, to your point, is going to be extroverted or like a Jets fan or whatever they think they need to be to succeed here. Which, by the way, you don't have to be a, a, a Jets fan. No, I'm a Giants fan. I never, Gary never liked that. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, you know, one of the things I'm, I'm doing immediately when I meet people 90 days in is, who have you met? Here are 10 people that I want you to meet, and I send that email out. 
Hey guys, please meet my new friend. You facilitate that. You yeah, please meet my, my friend Adam. He's uh, on the media team. He's also a bass player and, you know, he loves jam bands. Guys, make 15 minutes, 20 minutes to meet with Adam in the next 30 days. Yeah. And I do agree with you. I think that it is an employee's responsibility when they come into an organization to take that initiative. You can't just sit yeah. back and in cruise control and, and think everything is going gonna, is gonna to come to you. Well, look, I mean, it's the macrocosm and the microcosm. You can't, you don't, I mean, you can sit back in life and wait for things to happen, but I guarantee yeah. you in 50 years, you're still on that couch. So it, the, the work, life, you're meant to live. You want to, mm -hmm. you want to take steps. You want to see growth. You want to feel good when you're here, wherever you are. Like an employee's, this is something I'm very, very firm at. It's not just a nine to six job. Like, I don't look after them just for nine to six. They wake up in the morning. They have two kids. One has a fever. They got to drop the other one oh. off. I go to the gym. Your dog's sick. Your aunt's in the hospital. You got engaged. Life is happening before that person walks through this door. And I want to hold all of that. It's incredible. And, I mean, you talk about this a lot, but I, it blows my mind how you do that at scale. I think you mentioned we're, we're, you're in the mid-700s now. Yeah. You guys are in the mid-700s. Yeah. I mean, how do you hold such a place for everybody? How does your heart so big? <laughs> it's, it's incredible. Uh, There's one thing we were like 350. I think I was employee three. I was mid threes. Yeah. yeah. I, um, I love what I do. It doesn't matter. I don't, I don't feel it. It's, I just <sighs> love what I do. Well, I hate to go back to the dark side here, yeah. but I think it's something I really want to bring to the table here. Um, when that time comes, an employee has to mm -hmm. let go. How much responsibility does a company have to ensure a smooth landing on the other side? Um, 100%, if you're asking me. It's, I believe, well, look, I'll tell you what we do. What we do is before we know we might let someone go, we have already identified maybe three places that we can at least inter, inter, uh, introduce them to. The other thing that we've been doing lately is, um, is we have been giving working notices where someone can stay here for 30 days and work on their Lincoln, work on their CV, take interviews, all of that stuff. That's we fantastic. will help them. Like my crew is going to help them with their LinkedIn profile. That's unbelievable. That's called Gary Vaynerchuk magic. That is interesting. We should yep. we'll have a sidebar on that one. Yep. And, and then we have an alumni network. So he's getting hit up all day long. I'm getting hit up like, hey, we're, we're looking for social media manager mm -hmm. over here. And, you know, let's just say it's Jack. Jack is a C player here. We've tried to lift Jack up. He's tried. It's not working. He's going to be an A over there because he's stronger. He's better suited at that other job. Let's connect the dots. So I believe, to answer your question, that it is our responsibility. These are, this is family. We want people, Gary's always saying, we want people to stay with us forever. And that means in the ecosystem. If it's not VaynerMedia, it's something. Because look at what's happened with you. Not to dwell too much, but like, 360, we're back here. 360, you know, you and Gary saw each other in, in Texas and, you know, he mentions you on stage. Like, that is, that's alchemy. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's incredible. And, I, and, I, and, I, and that also comes down to the way, you know, I preach to people, like, don't, don't burn bridges. Just because you got low for, let go from a company, I mean, listen, shit happens. Yeah. Right. But you, you have to take responsibility and do an, a personal inventory. Where did I, where did I fail? Where did I go wrong? And I talk a lot about it in my journey, too. I take the majority of responsibility for mm -hmm. that. It was on me because I yeah. had a chance to fix it. Yeah, I did. And for whatever reasons, I didn't do that. And once I owned that and put it behind me, I was able I was able to move forward. Right. And and I, I would hope and I have a feeling you did. Offer yourself some forgiveness and go light on yourself. <clears throat> like, man, oh man, we are so tough on ourselves. And while it's fantastic that you were accountable and take responsibility, that's just what makes you a stand-up human being. Also, you're not going to like beat yourself up. So it happened. You lo you landed on your feet in more ways than one. That. And that's what we want for people when they leave here to land on their feet better than they were here. How do you assess somebody's mental state when you have to have that conversation? By the time I'm having that conversation or someone on my team is having that conversation, we've had enough conversations with that person and enough conversations with people that are close to that person to know what's up. Like mm -hmm. we know when a family member's in the hospital. You know, you well know that. I get those messages all day. We know when a person's, 
you know, struggling with something. I, I mean, I oversee everything that's HR, so I'm going to know that. And then no matter if that person is struggling with mental health issues or not, we're always going to go in with a generous heart right. and be as graceful as possible. I mean, if I'm having, if I know I'm going to do a tough one, I have a whole little ritual I do, like, you know. Without going too deep into that, I mean, I, 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 didn't, I didn't think I wanted to talk about this, but it's, an, it's a part of your job. It's in your job description that sometimes you actually have to terminate people. Yeah. What does that feel like? Um, it's an interesting question because I know I'm changing the trajectory of that person's day, paycheck, uh, livelihood for X amount of time. So I'm well aware of that. And that's why you want to go in with a generous heart, with grace, and with a good, like, explanation. People want to know why. So That's a very good point. You know, why, why, why? And I can tell you the first many times we did it here, we didn't have why, why, why. And we left people high and dry. And <sighs> that's not going to feel good. People want to know, like, what could I have done differently, to your point? Uh, can I have another chance? Or by the way, I don't believe you, Claude. So, all right, well, that's okay too. Has anyone ever freaked out on you? Yeah. Here at Vayner? Yeah, of course. Oh, but to your point, like, shouldn't I it say, not be a surprise? Like, I that... say, of course. I don't mean like, <laughs> the reason I say, of course, Adam, is because we're human beings and this is life on life's terms. You're going to react. And that person could have had a really <clears throat> terrible weekend or that person could have, you know, taken care of their family or whatever. Yeah. So, yes, and it's happened twice in the course of all the years I've been here. That's a tough one. And you, you, you talk about assessing that mental state. And do you, know, do, you, do you know the date of the day I got let go was April 1st? It was April Fool's Day. <laughs> I was like, come on, really? Do and, you know, <laughs> wow, do you want to know something, Adam? I wasn't in this role when that happened. You were? I was an SVP. You were client, you were client uh -huh. side. Yeah. Yeah, there was, the, I don't think there, there was, this role didn't exist. Well, we didn't, no, this is, the, this is the first role. I remember that. I forgot about the that. The person yeah. that was in the HR director, for you, know, you and I had a relationship. Yes. And, uh, and that's why that conversation happened with the two of us. And the reason, one of the big reasons that I am in this role is because I have the relation, had the relationships with people and the equity to, and the trust from Gary to know that I could come in with a great deal of empathy and tenderness to a yeah. conversation like that and also have some kind of candor. I mean, yeah, you were upfront with me. And listen, there was, was no way. I, with you. I mean, I, I knew that. The, I mean, listen, but, the, you know, there were things that were going well and there's things that weren't going well for me and they just kind of canceled each other out. And I think ultimately, uh, you know, it was a decision where it just wasn't the right place at the right time. That's right. Um, but I want to go back to that day and I really haven't shared this with, with anybody how dark that day was for me. Um, I walked out and I remember I, I you know, it was, it was a nice walk out. I was able to get myself yeah. in order here and everything. But the first thing I thought of is, how, how am I gonna call my wife? What, what, what am I gonna say to her? Mm -hmm. How am I, we just bought a house. How am yes. I gonna afford this mortgage? My daughter was three at the time. Um, that's real stuff. And I'm not discounting a 23 year old first job out of school, but you know, as you're, you know, moving your way up in life, you know, there's, there's different responsibilities, there's different, uh, there's different things. Going back to that, you know, what's the aftercare? Well, the aftercare for sure is they hear from Gary, they hear from me. Um, again, in today's day and age, we, have, we are very close because we're helping mm -hmm. network them to that next potential role. So, um, you know, they're, they're always gonna get an email from me. They're always gonna get an email and probably a coffee with Gary. And that's just how high touch we are as a, as a community and as, as a culture here. And also, like, recognizing it is a two-way street. I think what you've said, because you are self-aware, is like, hey, Claude, I realize that I wasn't at my best game. That doesn't mean that you should then not be able to afford your mortgage. That just happens to be the circumstance. There at that present cause, time. There is circumstance. <clears throat> and, uh, and I'm glad it all worked out, and I know it was painful, and I can remember that day like it was yesterday. Yeah, it was, it was a tough one here. <clears throat> so switching gears a little bit, <clears throat> I showed you the video of my yeah. experience with Gary, and he said, quote unquote, how do we not understand that how a person feels on the way out matters most, if not more than, we, than when they are there? What are your thoughts on that? What is your spin on that? Well, our brand is whatever you say our brand is. 
by the way. <laughs> so you leave and you were let go of, you're going to go talk about your day and this place any which way you want. So it's extremely important that we are leaving you with your head held high, yeah. knowing that we have you, we are going to help yeah. you, so forth and so on, and that you can... That you look, you're not going to feel great. No, you might feel relieved. A person <clears throat> may feel relieved. I t just to jump in there for a second. It took me about three months, and I and I had a sigh of relief. I had a really big yes. sigh of relief because I knew it wasn't right at that time. Yes. It wasn't the right opportunity. Things were not going the right direction. And eventually, when I got past it, I was able to have that hard reset. Yeah. So, but it's our our brand is extremely important, and humans are extremely important. So you know. How, how the outside world sees VaynerMedia and how the inside world sees VaynerMedia are not always going to be the yeah. same as these. Gary even said that. He, he said he continues in that speech to say, I know for a fact. He goes, actually, not for a fact. I could, it's pretty safe to assume that when Adam's out in the street and someone's talking shit about Gary or VaynerMedia, not that I need Adam to defend us, yeah. but I know that we left a good impression yeah. with him, and, and, that's, and that's absolutely true. Yeah. That's right. And, and Gary talks a lot about how hiring and firing stops with him. And I don't know if that's, that's still the case, mm -hmm. but 750 plus, you know, employees here. Is that scalable? Is that too hard? Is it micromanaging? No, no, gosh, I think that's the last thing Gary does. I mean, he, however, I will say there is not one person that we let go of that Gary has not approved. That is pretty amazing. He is mm. that invested and in the business. He's getting fed intel and information all the time, and so he's well aware. And he might say, nope, not today. That person, I want to give that sh another shot or yeah. bring that person to my team or whatever. Or he might just say, approved, what are we doing about it? Yeah, you know? no, that's, that's a tough decision. Um, and, and, and the dialogue that he and I have, like, it has to be constant. It, it, I, I have to be telling him the what, why, when, who, where, you know. So he is very invested in that, and he is extremely invested in um, the hiring, especially at certain levels and for certain departments. Yeah, I know you guys just uh, brought in a couple of uh, new C-suite executives. Yeah, they're amazing. Rob and Wanda um, are killing it. And I, I saw those names. I'm like, whoa. I'm yeah, like, that's those are really, those are some good hires right well, we, there. We growns up. Yeah, definitely scaling there. Um, what's not so awesome about working with Gary? <laughs> <laughs> I just I'll throw a curveball in there. That's so funny. Um, what is not so awesome about working with Gary? I mean, I think. You know, getting getting time with Gary is always going to be, I think, the biggest challenge, no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter who you're. Now, I have the benefit that I can walk up there and say I need two minutes. I always know the two minutes are going to turn into 15 minutes. But I'm also cognizant that those 30 people I spoke to in the last month have never met him. So yeah. it's like a trade-off. <laughs> you know, I'm like, is my time more important or is them getting in involved more important? And it's... You know, it's tough. So, yeah, time. I mean, hacking his calendar it will be his number. His, his people that are, you know, that's their job. I can't even imagine that. Yeah. So I, I want to get back to, to, to Claude here. And you do an incredible job on so many amazing podcasts of telling Thank your you. life story and your life journey, which is awesome. But I want to talk about some of your earlier jobs. Have you been, have you been in a job that didn't go so well where you got let go? Um, I've never been let go. However, I have let myself go. And what I mean by that is I have either given up uh, on myself or a job too early. Um, and, and that's kind of the reverse. Mm -hmm. You know, usually <laughs> I'm the one that's been like, and I'm out. And I'm I don't believe in you. And, you know, or, and Claude, you don't believe in yourself and you're going to get found out. So th those things have happened to me more so than, you know, I've never been, I've never been let go, but um Maybe I should have been. I don't know. Has there been a time here at Vayner where you felt, not obviously not that your job was in jeopardy, but like you made a pretty big mistake on something and you <clears throat> couldn't go back on it and you really felt that in the pit of your heart? Yes. I could say once or twice for sure. And thankfully, I have Gary, not to fall back on, to partner with, to help me out of that. The, those times, they were communicate, there were miscommunications between me and Gary that, mm -hmm. and then I... I took the ball and fumbled, mm -hmm. um, and it's extremely humbling. It it crushes me, um, and you know we recovered early on. 
So something, I'm going a bit out of order here, but something I wanted to bring up, which I think is extremely important, is that communication process uh, between managers and, and folks that work underneath them. And I think that's where a lot of things break in organizations. Um, and I think it's really important, two, two questions here. One, how do you work with managers, especially new managers, or yeah. even senior managers who may not be great at people, uh, people yeah. management skills, how do you work with them to really ensure from a, a, a development and feedback perspective that it's a uh, continuous uh, 360 flow? Yeah, so manager training is the number one thing that we're focusing on now and going into 2020. Uh, new managers and existing managers, not everyone is supposed to manage people. Huge right? point, right? I just want to pause on that because that, that, that was an epiphany to me in the yeah. last few years. Not everyone is supposed to manage people. There are tons and tons of people that want to tinker and want to be doers and want to be makers and creators. And they just are not in the business of like, it's not that they don't care about you. It's not their, it's not their thing. It's not what they do best. Yeah. Like I want to, I love growing and developing human beings, but there are, thank God there are people that aren't. The thing that we need to be very cognizant of is are we putting people in places to succeed if they are people managers because the people under them and around them want to grow do they inspire or how do you bring out they their want to be inspired they want to they they want feedback they want to have purposeful work they want to feel like they're getting the right coaching they don't want to be micromanaged i mean i, I you know there's a lot of emotional needs in a human being and especially in the workplace so we do a lot of training. We do radical candor feedback training. Um, feedback as a, is very difficult for people to give. The art of giving feedback is a skill yeah. that takes time to develop and perfect. Yeah, because you must have uh, empathy. And in order to have empathy, you must have self-awareness. So that is not just like magic dust we can sprinkle everywhere. You know, people are not going to grow on my timeline. People are going to grow on their timeline. And that's where I need to be adapting to them. You know, the company needs to adapt to them. We need to adapt to each other. So for example, like when we go back to the situation with you, you know, you, you eventually had the self-awareness to understand what happened and you were able to wake up then. Um, even though I gave you feedback, you were like, yeah, I get it. It was still hard. You would have wanted another, you would have wanted another college try. I did. Yeah. It just, you know, yeah. the, at that point, it was like, yeah, was we gave tough. you feedback, and yeah. So yep. the art of giving feedback, look, feedback is a gift. When we do not give feedback to anyone, we are unconsciously manipulating their growth and development. And that is a real, real yucky place to be in. It is. You're shortchanging somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. That's, and a, he, that's a good word. And, he, and Dave Meltzer talks about it, too. I think he talked about it. When with he was us. in here with you here, yeah. about when you, even if you're giving negative feedback to someone, it means you give a shit. And giving a shit means you at least care something about somebody. Yeah, I mean, look, <laughs> it is not, it is, it is a hard position to be in if you don't care or if you haven't woken up to caring about another human being. We are then setting you up to fail, so as a manager. So, I mean, all eyes have to be on people at all times. Let's get into some fun personal stuff here. So <laughs> your daughter Shalom yes. recently turned one. <laughs> How has motherhood affected you professionally? It's a very broad question. I, I mean, <laughs> I've always thought of myself as an empathetic and understanding person. And I can tell you that I knew nothing about parents and parenthood and what uh, returning parents go through. Nothing at all. And so it has changed my 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 entire worldview on on working parents and on motherhood and what it's like to <laughs> to always be on your time is no longer your time so um it's it's made me a, a, a wiser person i hope and it has certainly helped me prioritize my life which doesn't always go as planned you know but i have a certain amount of time that i am at work and then i I'm going to go home at 5.45 to see Shalom. It, it, it's prioritized. And, and how do you balance that? I mean, you travel the world. Yes, travel um, And I know firsthand how hard it is to be away from your kid. Yeah. How do, you, how, do you, how do you mind your heart? How do you balance your time? I mean, you have, you have a responsibility, a career to yeah. put food on the table for your family. At the same time, being present. How do, how do you juggle all that? Well, I really try not to be gone for more than three nights. And one of those nights might be an overnight flight. Right. 
um, FaceTime, thankfully. Thank God for FaceTime. And also like making sure that Shalom and I have a rapport with one another. So when I'm on the camera, she knows who it is. Yeah. Right. You know, so that we have, she's like, oh yeah, that's mommy. Stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it, it is tough. I mean, but I, I have photos and I, you know, I know that it's all, I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Exactly. And what the payoff is going to be. And that everything, everything I do is for her. Everything. The word legacy gets thrown around a lot. It means different things to different people in their life at different times. Asking you right now, Claude, at the end of 2019, about a new decade yeah. in a few weeks, which is crazy. What does that word legacy mean to you? What I have left this world, what I have created and what I have left and who, who I have touched. Um, I, I want my legacy to be that she had a generous heart that she made people feel seen, um, that she lifted. That's incredible. That's incredible. Let's talk about some fun things happening uh, a little bit outside of the Wiener universe here. Uh, the ING, am mm -hmm. I saying it right? The ING or the ING.com? Yeah, the ING. The ING. Well, just for my audience here, what's it all about? Yeah, so the ING is a website where people that have been, uh, that are, I should say, survivors or struggling with any kind of domestic abuse, sexual abuse, uh, emotional abuse, can come and tell their story. Mm. Because the voice is very, very powerful. And when you have been in situations like that, most of the time you live with a tremendous amount of shame and feel very isolated and other. And, you know, there are many of us out there that are in recovery from those types of things. And Glow and I wanted to, we wanted to be part of the solution with our own stories and, and give people a place to come to. And how is the launch going so far? Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's been great. It's weird to be like, woohoo. Right, it's not you something know, you're I mean, cheering like, behind. It's yeah. not a happy thing that more people, but it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's amazing um, you created. The fact that it has touched people and people have, they have thanked us, which we're not interested in that. That's not what's important. That they are like, yes, I need this. Yes, I'm going to send my friend here. You know, thank you for creating a place where I know I'm not alone. That's, that goes very far. That's far. That's incredible. Yeah. And you are so generous with your time. And you connect with so many people. Somebody that I connected with in the last few months is Rich Cardona. I, yeah. I love him I love and I love his story. Why do you feel so drawn to Rich? Oh, my goodness. I mean... <laughs> Rich is a brother from another mother, yeah. and I'm not sure how we met. I think we met on, on LinkedIn, and we immediately, for some reason, just started talking on the phone. And in those conversations, he was still at Amazon, and I could tell that he had uh, some things he was working through and working out and some pain, and I identified with that and wanted to, I just wanted to be a sister. You know, um, I believe in him. You know, I... Um, I used to say I believe in underdogs, and I'm not using the word underdogs anymore because I think that that is insulting. But I believe in people who know they have potential and they, and they just need help opening a door. I think that's your superpower. Thank you. <laughs> I like that. I think that is your superpower. And, and that is a question I ask guests towards the end, of my, at the end of my interviews. But that, you know, empathy is, if I asked you that question, you'd probably throw out empathy if I was going to guess on that one. Is that, that... a superpower? Um... My superpower, I think, is seeing. I, I think it's intuition. I think it's the ability to just see and feel. And yeah, empathy's part of that. But. You're, you're out there. You put yourself out there. You're incredibly generous with your time. And obviously, you have a private side like we all do. But what's something that most people may not know about you that you might be wanting to share a little bit more of? Gosh, I mean, what, what, <laughs> what genre should we go to? Uh, <laughs> I... Um, I love, I love live music. So do I. Yeah. I love live music. <laughs> I, um, I will listen to the same song on repeat in my headphones as often as I can. What's if it's like, if it's like, you know, yeah. if it's hitting me, if, if you it's feel like, it, if it's like sticking with me. I mean, yesterday I was listening to an old song by the water boys called this is the sea because the message is so good. Uh, so you post that on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. And, uh, or block party. So I, you know, I'm a risk taker. I really have always liked to 
ride very close to the edge. Um, that is a part of who I am. It's, it's, you know, I, it's not danger. I'm not interested in hurting myself. I like to ride the rail quite a bit. Is it that feeling? Is it? Yeah, the, it's a the, feeling. I like, you know, I drive fast. I snowboard fast. I do. I, 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 that's, you would walk in this room and never feel that, right? This is the most zen, comfortable place. And that's who I am. And I'm like, and I just, you know, it was snowing in Santa Fe where I, I saw that. It's crazy. Up. And I, I just went into a parking lot by myself and just did donuts on the ice. Like, I like that. How good did that feel? It felt amazing. Right. And no the kid else, wasn't in the car, right? No. no <laughs> let's, no, let's just call that out there. It was <laughs> just me. I think I was cranking up the who and... <laughs> So I like that stuff. What's the next live concert you have on your calendar? Gosh, I don't. And that's a problem. For me, I need, I'm a live music junkie. Yeah. And if I don't have that next thing on yeah. my calendar, and I, and I was looking at my, I was talking to my wife the other day. I'm like, what, what do we have next? She's like, nothing till next summer. I'm like, that's that not good be, enough. That can't be. That, that cannot be. Even if I go to yeah. a show at like, you know, Bowery or one of the small places, yeah. I, need, I need to have um, the live music. Any, any music these days, any new music coming out that's really getting your attention? Uh, you know, it's funny, new music. I mean, I don't listen to the radio, so I don't really, I don't really know. Is anybody bringing somebody maybe that you maybe not have heard of that have been around for a while? Like, oh, shit, I never, I, I, I never know, got I into know, Ween. I mean, I'm just making I didn't know the, I didn't know 1975. You know, it's, I don't love all of their songs, but there are some that I really like. It's a little soft for me, I'll tell you the truth. Um, I know the concert, Sisters of Mercy. That's your next one? Yes, and that's going to be, I think, in, uh, in England in April, I hope. Yeah, so real goth, like some yeah. dark shit. That's awesome. What travels do you have coming up? I uh, just got back from L.A. late last night. I've got the holidays coming up, and then we'll probably hit London and Singapore and then South by Southwest. And I'm going to be at South by. Oh, good. This will be my first year. I've never been. That's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little sidebar <laughs> yeah. about that. I think this could be some fun stuff. So let's bring yeah. it home here, Claude. Yeah. These are some questions that I ask everybody that comes on the show. Um, and it's a broad one, and I'm very curious on this one. To date, what would you say is your greatest professional accomplishment? Working for 800 people and, uh, and doing a, uh, a jolly good job. One word to describe you. Kind. Quirky. We'll give her two. And last but not least, not every day is sunshine and rainbows here at Vayner. Not every day is sunshine and rainbows in life. I mean, we were just talking about it. My son is sick. I'm working on three hours of sleep right now, and it's, and it's tough, right? And sometimes you got to make hard decisions. Sometimes you step in that puddle of mud. Sometimes you get <laughs> locked out of your car. And some days aren't great. Other days are amazing, and everything's going awesome. Life is going exactly the way you planned. Claude, what do you look to when things are not so good? And what do you look to when things are amazing to show gratitude? Claude Silver, what is your North Star? My North Star is my daughter. That is, and that's new. You know, my North Star was my Nana for years and years who died at 101. She was wow. my heart. Uh, she's my person. Um, my North Star is peace. Like, I need peace. I need peace in my life, my home life, my work life. Um, and I need joy. And, and I know, you know, joy is not every day, but I, I need that. So I am always extremely thankful for Shalom, for my family, for my parents' health, uh, for the fact that the sun did come out today. You know, um, I've got a great gig. And yeah. <laughs> I get to work with all of these people Every single day. I mean, who gets to do that? When, I, when it is my last breath, this will be part of my story. <sighs> wow. What is, if you thought about it, your resolution for 2020, your New Year's resolution? Um, action. And I haven't put the entire sentence together, but taking action on things that I have been complacent with or put off um, or been like, you know, eh, I don't know. But taking action, movement. Claude Silver? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, thank you. This is great. And in closing thoughts here, to quote Claude in a recent post, I am deeply into studying the effects of kindness, generosity, relationships, and the warm glow of altruism. Well, Claude, you're looking directly at a recipient of that warm glow, and you've greatly impacted my life. 
and hopefully I made a little dent in your life as well. And our relationship means the world to me, and I am forever grateful and I appreciate it. And although we only worked together for six, seven months, you made a tremendous impact and you have set the gold standard in this world that we live in, in talent acquisition, HR people, and just genuinely how to interact in the professional and personal world with other humans. And I applaud you for that and I thank you immensely. Um, and you've shown that it's okay, not just okay to be vulnerable, but improving that like once you open up your heart, the world truly opens up to you. And that's what you taught me and that's what you left me with. Thank you for your time, yeah. your generous honesty, and I look forward to continuing and building our relationship. And again, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Adam. And Claude, where could folks connect with you? Where could they find you? Yeah, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, here. Awesome. <laughs> thank you very much. I'm touched. And to everyone listening and following at home, thank you for joining us on the podcast. I greatly appreciate your time. Remember, be kind to each other. Take your online, offline, connect, subscribe, link, follow us along, and catch us next week for another great episode of the podcast. Wisdom is forever, but for us, it's time to go. Thank you for joining us. Luckily, we'll be back with our next episode jam-packed with more incredible humans. For more info, please visit www.nhptalentgroup.com.